I, Donald T. Regan, do solemnly swear. I, Donald T. Regan, do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. That I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. On which I am about to enter. On which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, no, thank you. Okay. Just call me Chief. <laughs> Chief? Okay. And this is the daily plan. <laughs> yes, sir. We'll have to get your signature twice. So okay. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Can I assume that Jim Baker took his yes. Uh, oath? Yes, sir. 1245, yes, sir. <coughs> Thanks. Okay. All right. I was hoping you get something in it, but something fair and we'll record out of it. Thanks, Dan. Come on in, gang. Uh, let's go. Hey, Siri. Good morning. Absolutely true. Back when I was governor, you were such a soft native leader. Canton universities and so forth, uh, wanting them to divest themselves of any stocks in companies. But I remember your statements then about how important this was to the welfare of so many people in your country. And uh, I found myself quoting you. I know now there's a time or even expectation that I would ever be sitting here. We're talking about it just in this particular stage, just now. And I said in my first the president, I this is the third time you've been here. You see, I just want you to know how able I am to sign it and send it back down to me. Give this old cat over here. Is it going Mr. President, some of these congressional leaders are already saying this budget is dead unless he cuts the fence more. I just wrote it back to line, sir. <laughs> Aren't you going to have to cut the fence more, though, sir? Uh, um, we'll all talk about that when we when we get time to read the book. Probably last thing that Bed said, "Hey, we need to pour your bed tonight." Oh, sorry about that. I started to sleep. Read every word. If you got a lot of that, you just go. Are they both the same, aren't they? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 There are also some complaints that you were to only get the budget down to 144 million in the third year. That if you can't cut the deficit more, how are they going? I've stated my view on on projections before. So far, since I've been here, none of the projections have been right, and they have been wrong. The in the office of the the wrong way. Well, you expect the deficit uh, to be larger. Uh, as I said, I just don't believe any can move with any sound beyond the source to make a projection that is valid for those periods ahead. And most economies that I've talked to have agreed with that. So what do you think will be the outcome? 
I think the outcome is we're going to establish that we have the budgeting, the spending up, but spending on a downward path that is going to lead out here to where we can set a date for actual balancing of the budget. Do you think you can get this budget through then, sir? Do you think you can get this budget through then? There's some variation there. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> some variation there. Okay. It just depends on how close we get. We're all together right now. Yeah. Right now, I'll settle for a tie. How's your cold, sir? What? How's your cold? You sound a little hoarse. Everybody keeps calling it a cold. Mm -hmm. ah. But it's, uh, it's getting very much better. Thank you, sir. talking to this group of executives, Mr. President, they are uh, uh, growth. Uh, the purpose of the meeting really is to uh, have them tell you what, you, what they think of, of our uh, past and proposed programs uh, and anything else that's on their mind. Uh, ask uh, anyone here to just lead off with whatever is on her mind. So we had a little discussion about uh, the trade deficit before you came in. Uh, but I think first it would be appropriate to get the feeling of the group on on how they feel uh, uh, our past and proposed uh, policies uh, have affected their own businesses. I have a few words here and a, and a little ceremony to go through with. I'm pleased to sign this economic report, and I want to commend Dennis Cannon and his staff here for the fine job that they have done. I think we can, we can take pride in the very significant progress that our, to our, that's our hard work and sticking to our principles that transformed a sick economy to one of healthy growth with much lower inflation and interest rates. Now is the time for recommitment. We need the full support of the Congress to end nearly 50 years of deliberate deficit spending by the federal government. The one sure path to a balanced budget is to keep the rate of growth spending below the growth of the economy. 
So we've submitted a budget that will freeze overall government program spending while ensuring that the funds crucial to our defense rebuilding program are there. If the Congress can cooperate and helps us reform uh, our tax system and continue reducing unneeded regulation, we can end the burden of overspending and borrowing and leave our children a much stronger future. And now I'm going to sign the economic report. of representatives. And for Dr. Niskanen. Thank you. Mr. President, the American economy is once again the envy of the world, and you deserve a lot of the credit. And only as a minor compensation for that, we'd like to award you uh, honorary membership in the Council of Economic Advisors and give you something to chop wood in uh, back at the ranch. <laughs> well, thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Well, I appreciate that. And what? Again? Where do you plan to wear it, sir? <laughs> He's just told me where I have to wear it. At the ranch, chopping wood. Why is it that everybody, including so many of you, continue to say that no cuts in the defense budget when there have been cuts in the neighborhood of around $30 billion in what was the projected budget uh, for the Defense Department? I just think that the mistake we made was in making the cuts in advance we should have sent it up the way it was and let the Congress make the cuts. And then they'd have been happy. Well, then has Congress got your bottom line on uh, military spending? Well, we're going to have to. I'm quite sure that we'll be discussing this and going at this. But I think it is unfair to say that there's been no cut. As a matter of fact, the defense budget, 1986, as it's submitted now, is just about where the projected budget of President Carter was when he left office and made his five-year projections as to what should be spent on national defense. Mr. President, are you going to take this case to the country soon? Yes, I think the people have a right to express themselves on this, and uh, they need to have the facts, so I'm going to try to give them the facts. How are you going to do that? What? How are you going to do that? Do you going to go out and make some speeches and uh, make some appearances? I haven't, made any, haven't made any specific plans yet. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Reagan, do you have any reaction to the vote on this meeting today? Yes, yeah, a happy one. <laughs> I'm pleased that uh, so far I think there are three or four others of our nominees that were approved also today by the committees. Any special plans for your birthday tomorrow? Birthday? <laughs> <laughs> oh. You mean the 35th anniversary of my 39th birthday? I mean, no, I've gotten used to that. I just treat it as any other day. It makes me feel better to do it that way. <laughs> okay. All right. Talking to the woodshed again. <laughs> Morning, Mr. President. Happy birthday. Hi. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Hello there. Nice to see you, Mr. President. Happy birthday. Hello there. Children's table? Yeah. Hello to your staff. No, on this day, I'm. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Well, thank you very much. This is a cake. Happy birthday. Thank you. Discussed the idea of singing to you, but we all got very timid. <laughs> so we decided. They've got to. Yes, we want you to know, in your honor for our dessert today, we're having a birthday cake. 
will be enjoying. Mr. President, that isn't true, we attended. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, to you. Happy birthday Mr. President. Happy birthday to you. How old are you? <laughs> 39. I've been that 35 times now. Please sit down. You asked you to keep the happy birthday from the press on week by week. Well, I, I, want to, I want to tell you something. It's also my birthday. So I was I, just going to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought this whole thing had been arranged for me. And I <laughs> but thank you, Dan. No, no, <laughs> I just I thought that was I was going to announce that and the very fact that I thought it was very impressive that we had two such disparate generations representing this <laughs> birthday. One a crazy kid and me. <laughs> well, good that you could all be in here and uh, enjoy the cake. You haven't had lunch yet, have you? No, I see everything's clean. Well, just enjoyed having you here, and uh, I know that Don and some others will soften you up when you're here, Jack. Okay. So I'll turn you over to them. You them. didn't answer Sam's question about uh, Mr. Stockman. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we were just wondering, sir, what you thought of uh, the candid appearance he made yesterday. I don't think. You people keep saying that all the time. Oh, you think? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, it's my birthday. I don't have to answer questions. <laughs> Did Mr. Buchanan tell you that? <laughs> Did Mr. Buchanan tell you that? That you didn't have to answer questions on your birthday? No, nobody had to tell me that. I just decided that. <laughs> it was one of my decisions, all on my own. <laughs> I was letting Reagan be Reagan. <laughs> Thank <laughs> okay. you very much. Sure. <laughs> You're going to hear this for the third time. <laughs> you start there. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy birthday to you. That's why you didn't get your chocolate cake. <laughs> cake all over. <laughs> I was too athletic. That's deceiving. That is chocolate. Mm -hmm. it's, it's white beautiful. chocolate. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well, thank you all very much. I only have to make the first slice to me. <laughs> right? Through my middle there. Whoops. There. Now, I'll, uh, I'll let you... <laughs> Gentlemen, carve it up. You're all going to have some, aren't you? We certainly are. This is from that little blonde kid that lives with me. And <laughs> <laughs> it's from me. Well, for ah. goodness sakes. I'm glad you didn't order dessert. <laughs> no, or eat all of the cake you've had so far. <laughs> Thanks, I forgot something.
Let's come on in here. Lunch and engagement today with this being the 75th anniversary of Boy Scout. Indeed. The only thing around town that's older than me. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, no, I indeed appreciate the opportunity. And I admire the speech was terrific. Thank Dying you. that speech. Well, this is speaking of admiration. I admire what you have done. I think this is just, I've been telling everybody about that catalog. Oh, we got, yes. I brought you one. Well, you sent me one also. <laughs> I brought you another one. Uh, we've ra in one year, we raised almost $5 million with the catalog. I think that's just great. People Your plan, too, that you, that you worked well, out. Well, I think Columbus ought to be a part of the solution. And you've provided the leadership, the momentum, the direction, and thank God you have. Now it's time that we get on with the program. And we're not, we're not going to be a part of the problem. We're going to be a part of the solution. You know, none of your colleagues you don't exactly well, feel this. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, I, your staff has been tremendous. Now, these